Yep. Kansas City Chiefs next here. Last season, Juju Smith-Schuster, McCole Hardman tied for 33rd in points per game, PPR points per game, among all wideouts. McCole Hardman finished 33rd in half PPR points per game. Juju finished 38th. Those were the best performances we've gotten from any Chiefs receiver not named Tyreek Hill since Patrick Mahomes arrived. So, Jared, as we flip to this year and look at where everybody's being valued, I don't think that anybody's dramatically overpriced at ADP before we talk about those numbers. I do think, though, that people generally overrate the available ceiling here in their perception of who is a, a strong target or not at wide receiver among Chiefs. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it is, it is kind of like the, the Bills, right? And in this case, it's, it's Travis Kelsey versus Stefan Diggs that kind of soaks up um, a lot of Mahomes' production. It's it's still a, a good spot. Though. So I looked at the Chiefs wide receivers rankings in total PPR points since Mahomes took over. 2018, they were eighth. The Chiefs scored the eighth most wide receiver PPR points. 2019, 12th. 2020, eighth. 2021, 10th. Last year, they slipped to 15th without Tyree Kill. So, you know, still above average. So th- there are still fantasy points to be had here. It's just, you know, in recent seasons, outside of Tyreek Hill, we haven't seen any, like, one player um, kind of, you know, stand up and, 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 and take most of them. Yeah, and I mean, that's what I think is going to continue here. I don't I don't see any reason to believe that one of these players among Kadarius Tony, Sky Moore, Rashi Rice, you know, whoever else you feel like throwing in, I don't, I don't have a reason to believe one of those guys is going to step up and be the leader. I think it's going to be like last year where stuff gets spread around. Yeah, but I think if one guy does it, it's going to be Kadarius Tony. Um, just what we've seen him do. And I, I get, it's been a, a tiny sample size. He's been in the NFL two seasons now. He's had basically eight healthy games, um, but he's drawn a 20% target share in those eight healthy games. If he can draw a 20% target share in Kansas city this season, he's, he's going to be a serious fantasy factor. He's also averaged 2.12 yards per route run for his career. Um, just to put that in perspective, only 12 wide receivers with 50 plus targets topped that mark. This season, and I, the Chiefs really like this guy. Um, you know, according to Adam Teicher of ESPN, the Chiefs wanted Tony to fall to them in round one of the 2021 draft. It sounds like they were prepared to take him if he did. They tried to trade for him last spring. They did trade for him in the middle of last season. So um, I, I just I, again, if someone's going to emerge as the top wide receiver in Kansas City, the clear top wide receiver, I do think it's going to be Kadarius Tony, and he is a guy I'm willing to take shots on at his wide receiver three price tag. I will definitely agree that he is a talented guy, which is, of course, why he was around one pick, especially after not playing a whole lot of wide receiver in college. Uh, I think the target share and the yards per route numbers are skewed a little bit. The 20 percent target share for me, for a guy that the Giants drafted um, in round one and to a team that was bad at wide receiver. That's that's not a great number. It's an okay number. The yards per route. You know, again, he joined this team that was bad at wide out as a first round pick. They want him to get the ball. He gave him the ball when he was on the field. So that's going to skew that yards per route number a little higher. Similar for the Chiefs last year, when he was on the field, they were throwing the ball his way. He was not on the field a whole lot. That included in the playoffs where Sky Moore ran twice as many routes as Kadarius Tony did. Justin Watson ran more routes than Kadarius Tony did. So, you know, I know that he had just joined the team midseason, but so far we've got a guy who was so disappointing in his first stop that they traded a first round pick away for a third rounder. And then we got a guy who, you know, got on the field marginally for the team that traded that draft pick to get him. So I think it's a fair spot. I think I'm fine with taking some shots at Kadarius Tony where he's going wide receiver 35 on underdog, but he's right ahead of George Pickens. To me, those two are pretty similar in terms of, you know, floor versus ceiling. If you want to take shots on both, go ahead. I think both of them are overrated for what their real ceiling potential is. He's going ahead of Traylon Burks, who I'm definitely taking ahead of Kadarius Tony. Going ahead of Deontay Johnson, I'm Deontay Johnson ahead of Tony very easily. And going ahead of Gabe Davis, I'll take Gabe Davis with Josh Allen over Kadarius Tony with Mahomes. I'm with you on Burks and Deontay Johnson over Kadarius Tony and Tyler Lockett's only four picks ahead of Tony in underdog ADP. So I, I, and that's why I don't have a ton of Tony right now. Like I, I want to get pieces of the guy and you know, we'll see how these ADP shake out, but I'm definitely with you on, um, you know, Burks and Deontay going behind Tony being, being better picks at this point. And if I can get Lockett over Tony, I'm, I'm definitely doing that. 
looking at the other Chiefs wide receivers, and I'm realizing now I didn't even look at uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling's ADP. That's how much I'm thinking of him at this point. But Sky Moore, wide receiver 56, middle around 11 and under, underdog drafts. Rashi Rice, wide receiver 59. That's later in the same round in terms of overall ADP. Rice, I, I'm staying back from at this point. Rookie wide receivers tend to come along a little slowly under Andy Reid. It's not the easiest position to learn for him. Even if you look at Tyreek Hill's rookie year, he led Chiefs receivers in targets that season. He was still 34 targets behind Travis Kelsey's team lead. He worked a much shorter range than he ultimately did over the next couple years with the Chiefs. He also ran the ball a lot. So they got Tyreek Hill involved a lot, but it was in a much different role than what he came to play. So even Tyreek Hill is the extreme example, was a little bit limited in terms of his rookie year usage. Sky Moore, terrible rookie year was a pretty good prospect, was around two picks. So I think that there's some upside to the player. I'm not planting a flag for him, but if I'm comparing Sky Moore at wide receiver 56 to Kadarius Tony at wide receiver 35, it's Sky Moore for me. Yeah, Sky Moore is still the my like you know next guy in this Chiefs wide receiver core behind Kadarius Tony. Um, you know, he did struggle to get on the field as a rookie, which can be a bad sign. Sky Moore was fourth among KC wide receivers in snaps. He was fifth among them in pass routes. That's that's you know worrisome. He did earn targets at a decent clip. Sky Moore, 1.182 targets per route run last year. That was actually just ahead of Juju Smith-Schuster, who was at 0.181. And it was way ahead of McCall Hardman and um, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. So like when Sky Moore was on the field, he was getting targets. So he just needs to earn his way on the field a bit more. I think it's definitely possible in year two. Let's remember, this guy, Sky Moore played quarterback and cornerback in high school. Quarterback and cornerback. Just a three-year college player from a smaller school at Western Michigan. Like to me, it wasn't a surprise that, you know, he he wasn't able to carve out a huge role as a rookie. I definitely think a um, year two jump is possible. And I would, I would definitely side with him over Rashi Rice at this point as a redraft pick. And like you said, did well on targets per route. He, Tony and Kelsey all finished ahead of Juju Smith Schuster. Mm -hmm. Tony was ahead of Sky Moore. Yeah. Moore was on the field for more routes than Tony. You know, it's you, it's not apples to apples because they were on the team for different amounts of time. But we're also talking yeah. about a rookie. So it's all stuff where you can point to small samples and say there might be something there. I think as long as you're not too set, I, I'm not planning a flag for any of these guys. If we're taking shots on them at appropriate prices, um, that's where I'm comfy. And then, you know, obviously we're talking some Travis Kelsey, but there's not much to say. The guy is the king. He belongs in round one. You don't have to take him there if you don't want to, but he belongs there. I don't even know what I was doing recently, but I, I was just looking at um, tight, you know, total tight end points last season. Travis Kelsey scored 103 more PPR points than the second best fantasy tight end last year. 103 more points than any other tight end. Only four wide receivers scored more PPR points than Travis Kelsey. So, I mean, yeah, I, he 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 should be a top a top six pick in, in most fantasy drafts to me. And that was at age 33. And everybody was like, well, Tyreek Hill's gone. Defense is going to be all over him. He was like, so (laughs) yeah, it was kind of, it's kind of silly. 